There is a lot of things a lot of people could say about Raikou. None of it is, uh, or not none of it, but not most of it, you cannot say in polite company at all. You are going to get some really weird looks. Uh, one thing you definitely can't say about Raiko now, though, is that she's bad. Because she's not. Now she is in the same category as Arjuna. Uh, but instead of, like, MP spamming, he is so crit heavy, it's not even funny. Like, this is an AoE Berserker that can drop star bombs and is encouraged to be critting. Juna, all he cares about is red to your dead. Raiko, she wants to like be like on the field. She is not here for the short term. He is here for the long haul. And boy, do her crits show it. That's an advantage she has over Juna. If you hit any of Juna's other cards, they're not going to do shit. They really won't because he's not getting them buffed. I mean, yes, he gets them buffed from his debuff power mod, but that's it. Raiko, she's critting on her, her arts and buster cards. So she's spamming her MP more. She's not nearly as heavily reliant on Oberon as... I don't want to say Vich too, because she functions really good with Vich now. She functions well with Oberon for farming. But for a boss fight, you're definitely you're definitely keeping Oberon not coming in on the third turn. His most challenge quests aren't done in three turns these days. But yeah, Raiko is definitely in the current meta now. In case you, you wanted a T TLDR. Let's go through. So this is from Shimosa. This is from Oni Land, or not Oni Land, uh, Onigashima? I think it's Onigashima. Has to do with right closure lore. Base attack, 11.5k, right above the midpoint, right above it. Is that a bad thing I'm on a Berserker? No, because her class mod is going to make her power, like, make her damage go up intrinsically. And then she's a Berserker, so she gets type effective against literally every class except foreigners and draco right am i missing oh mash well those are such niche cases you might like you're not gonna see a foreigner and a like farming node that often so they, they're kind of like stuck to uh lotteries or events hp Decently tanky for a Berserker. I'm not gonna lie, 13.5k is actually a lot. I know a lot of Berserkers have like attack that is closer to 13.5. So like the attack and HP are such a big gap. But for her, it works. Cause like, she doesn't have, she has hard survivability, but it's not the, not good hard survivability of catch my drift. Uh, Star weight, star gen, normal berserker numbers, but because it's Raiko, kind of just ignore this. It, like her star gen is gonna get amped real quick. Like literally after the first MP, uh, you should constantly be trying to MP again. Constantly. You should not, there should not, like when you're using Raiko, there really shouldn't be a turn where you're not MPing. Uh, like otherwise you will run into issues. Luckily, none of her skills have to do with refund. So literally, as long as you're spamming the NP, you will have enough stars to crit and you'll have enough uh, crits to MP again. And that goes with this 0.46% MP gen or hit arts cards, two of them. That is like par for the course for this game. Uh, and it's very helpful that she is a berserker because she's pretty much guaranteed to crit on these. That is why the MP gain on these are so low. Because most of the servants that have like arts cards like this usually are crit focused. Um, classic example is Zenobia. She is so heavily crit focused and our arts cards are just like that. If you've ever used Zenobia, you know her art, like even, I mean, granted it's double cast, right? But her like crit damage is stupid and her MP gauge just like, 
again that is with double castoria buffs but they're in a challenge quest there's nothing saying you can't use castoria with raiko and buff up her art art there is nothing saying you can't just because castoria is not an art sport doesn't mean raiko doesn't need what castoria gives she does not have hard survivability castoria gives a lot of hard survivability and and she's a berserker that isn't uh triple buster uh so there is potential for arts chains it's just not high because vich only has one arts card and even that arts card is fucking stupid uh all right so back to the deck three hits on quick four hits on art one hit on buster five hit extra attack and it's not gonna be a good extra attack like these two numbers are just like not high enough that this is gonna really matter so and this is probably gonna be the trend moving forward with how they're doing these buffs i'm pretty much just gonna start recommending mana loading at this point if a servant doesn't already have a buff or their buff their battery sorry if a servant doesn't have a battery or they have a janky ass battery that doesn't fit in the current meta pretty much as long as it's not 50 you can go for like mana loading you really should because there's no reason not to like a lot of my servants i just got screwed and have to get either another copy or higher bond or they fix fucking servant coins before i'm actually able to use them with like 50 percent ce's now am i actually going to level up multiple servants to like bond 11 just to use another lore on them to let them use a 50 percent c fuck no no i'll work out some other way about it but yeah like let's get started i i like the buffs and i'm also annoyed by them but that that it took so long for them anyway her skill has already been buffed what was it internal arms mastery um, if you ever watch Fate Zero, this is what Lancelot does against Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh shoots him with all his treasures. Lancelot picks it up. It's now his noble phantasm. That is eternal arms mastery. She has it. Guess what, chat? Guess what? Guess what? At the same rank as Lancelot, and then she got it buffed. Who's the better swordsman? Cuck Knight or Mommy? The answer is obvious because what she gets the genji clan martial arts discipline oh boy she gets three attacks of 60 percent crit damage for three turns is that a lot no but this is general crit damage would i have liked it to be general crit uh three turns like flat absolutely could they actually buff this to fix that sure are they going to prob mm okay actually we'll come back to that later but i actually think it's more likely raiko would get this buff than them buffing this skill like truly i think you're more likely to see this buff uh especially because i believe this is a really early buff yeah interlude campaign nine Oh my God, what year was this? For JP, four years ago? Oof. It's not as early as I thought, but it's still kind of early. Yeah, it's still kind of early. Um. Oh, wait, this is when they were doing all the janky buffs, right? Wait a second. It's not this one. No, 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 but this... How the fuck did Arthur get... Yeah, no, 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 no. How the fuck did Arthur... How did Arthur get this buff, but Raiko got three times three turns for 10% more? I don't... I actually don't get it. I guess I'm pretty sure it's because she's a berserker. But, like... I do see this getting buffed before this one. All right, let's talk about the skill that actually got buffed. This skill looks horrible. It is a turn of dodge, and they threw on the buster 
for extra measure, even though it has a buster icon. This was bad. I hated this skill on Jack, and I hate it even more because it's like 20% less. Buff. They made it three turns. Thank you. Now she actually worked with Koi and Skaya. She had, well, no, she always had it. But like, you can never double stack that. Dodge isn't changing. 30% battery. Thank you. Raiko can do buster farming now. She can fully do it. She doesn't really need to rely on an extra 10% from somewhere. Although technically, totally. No, no, no. Well, we'll talk more about that stuff later. But this, these two are the most important. 30% battery. Buster buff is three turns. That's all she ever needed. That's the only reason she wasn't in the meta. I will go to, go to all the number changes later. Let's keep going because it's our the video is already at 11 minutes. Third skill, mystery killer increases damage against demonic enemies. And then a second power mod against servants with the earth or sky attributes. Normally like this would be, oh, why, why can't they give us two different ones? Cause this is half, this is most of the servants in the game. Earth is like the second highest, I think. And then sky attribute is pretty much the rest. Like we can, let's go look at this right now. And then on top of that, she has demonic, which is a farming power mod. Yes, man, sky, earth, sky. Those are the three most common. Bitch gives her power mod against these servants. She, oh, oh, wait. Oh no, okay, so I'm using this wrong. This is what bitch gives her. This is what she gives herself. This is what she gives herself. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 24. Uh, these count as servants, even though you know, you're not really thinking of them as that way. Uh, you wouldn't bring or fight Draco. So, like, literally, most servants in the game. Oh, okay, yeah. And you can. <laughs> Corners are mixed over everywhere. But basically, in normal Buster farming, there is never a time. There is almost never a time Raiko does not have a power mod. So, most servants in the game. And then you throw in Demonic. It's not a whole lot, but um, there is only one foreigner here. Meaning you bring Raiko to fight literally all these servants and um, the damage is probably gonna explode. People are gonna die. All right, let's finish it out. Passives, max resist D, 12% debuff resistance. Madness Enhancement EX. Um, good luck getting Raiko to not get you to call her mo mother. Good, actually, good luck because that's where her Madness Enhancement comes from. And I'm not joking. It has to do with her children, and she sees you as her child, no matter what kind of relationship you have with her. Just check the Dojins. All right. <laughs> Quick performance up 11%. And then divinity one uh for extra tickle before i said extra attack uh i would have to check my account but i probably did go extra attack so now i'm kind of screwed i need the servant coin fix otherwise i have to go for mp2 raiko and still go get bond levels up to nine so probably not i'm not i'm not gonna fix my mistake but in okay so in my defense for choosing extra attack uh, Raiko didn't have a battery. Uh, two, it's NA. Three, she is a crit servant that you are probably going to want to do a couple brave chains with. Just saying. It's not the worst idea, but if you look at her deck and her base stats, it's not the best idea now. From now on, get mana load. That's the whole reason I'm making this video is because Raiko is out on raid up. Normally, I try to do the buffs in order when they come out. Raiko's on raid up. J NA can actually do something about this if they if you want to. Murderer's Row's over. You pick servants you want. And if you 
held out for Oberon. You held out for Vich. Well, look at this. You can use Raikou. You can enjoy using Raikou. Red attack chance resistance against assassins. It's their third depend. MP has been buffed, but this happened a long time ago. Right? I'm not mistaken. This happened a while ago. Oh, no, I am very not. No, f holy crap. Um, This was last year. I actually forgot that. Holy shit. I am getting servers mixed up. All right. Yeah, so they're definitely not... Uh, Hey, they wouldn't double buff this. Ah, uh, you are delusional if they think you'll they'll yeah. You are delusional if you think they're buffing her MP again. They would not give her a battery if they plan on buffing her MP again. Seven hit AoE Buster. Seven hit AoE is the important part. Reduces credit attack chance by 20%. Good. This is telling you you want to use her in a more boss fight setting. Overcharge effect increases star gen by a hundred percent base for one turn, meaning that arts cards will drop stars. Your star rate is completely okay. So here's an example: if the star gen formula works, and this is super sim simplified, that you have this, and then you have a modifier. This is literally gonna double her effective star gen to be sim somewhat similar to like a saber. It breaks the mold of her class of what she is able to do. And then you consider that overcharge gets you even more and that seven hit buster AOE that is 21 hits. That is going to be a lot of stars. Along with the fact that the buster would have already made at least some stars. And that's all that is also only counting like if it was an arts MP doing it where every hit is now guaranteed to drop a star. This is Buster. You might drop like 30, 40 stars on her MP. And then you have her follow up of doing crits to make even more because the star gen is not just for the MP, it's for the whole turn. So if you have a mighty chain, you are going to actually like gen a whole lot of stars and a lot of refund. You are going to gen a lot back. And honestly, mighty chain is her best card chain because then her arts card gets full refund uh, if you put it at the end. Mats, she needs bones. She needs a lot of bones. She needs a lot of these. Yeah, she doesn't need this many of these. Uh, pen though. She needs proofs. Uh, she doesn't. These aren't that bad, honestly. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're that bad. And Bon CE. Buster performance up 10%. Party crit damage up 15%. Merlin CE. Can I actually recommend summoning for Raikou now? Yes, I truly can. Because Juna has um Juna has this little problem where if you bring him to fight people that can't be debuffed, uh his damage does not hit for much. Now, yes, you can try other debuffs. But if someone is like fully debuff immune, you cannot bring Arjuna Alter. Now, would you bring Morgan instead? Probably. But Morgan's kind of big role, like she can do it, but her big role is like more stally. Don't get me wrong. Morgan can do like big uh, challenge quest stuff. She definitely has the kit for it. But her kit also lays into her doing more stally stuff with the invincible comp, invincible comp. Um, and also that third skill cooldown is just a little bit too long to actually be used with uh, Coin Sky, so she's not getting uh, that stuff double stacked. Raiko, every single thing, every single one of her skills is offensive. There is a big reason to double stack Raiko. This being number one, 
because when you double sack this you essentially have the same power mod that bitch gives to humans and to man trait enemies servants included you double stack this it's this like there is literally no difference uh no matter like what servant you're fighting and like because if you like you notice if you're fighting man attribute enemies their damage is so much higher than normal now Raiko gets to do it for every enemy so is it like essentially she like like essentially Raiko's power mod is just like Juno how it's pretty much always active but this isn't based on debuffs this is solely on Raiko and who you're fighting but again saying repeating myself there aren't a lot of servants that Raiko can't hit for power mod damage not a lot of them Raiko is already super popular because of the dojins uh and all like also Genji clan shenanigans is just like fun shenanigans uh i was super happy in uh with her in kankyo i'm happy with her in like other places like other uh i'm not just talking about dojin i'm talking about other events uh she is like unironically one of the characters that got me into fate not all of them but she is one of them Rida is uh a blessed soul that gets more hate than he deserves but this is not a bad servant not anymore before she only needed this so she wasn't a bad servant she just needed a buff let us see here oh wow this video is taking longer than i thought oh well i'm happy yeah so they are literally just count Cause like you might as well just count you might as well just count that she's always gonna have like the the power mods up like even jord is saying it How, counted 50 percent power mod wave one and two and 100 percent wave three because since her and bitch she cover man earth and sky same same exact reasoning she hits harder than juna And if the enemy happens to be demonic as well, again, there aren't that many servants, but there is some overlap. There's, I'm pretty sure most of those demonic servants are not star or beast. Not all of them, at least. Okay, and then berserkers. Her numbers shouldn't have gone up, but her numbers should be more, they're more uh, yeah oh and she does more damage against earth attribute the reason for this is mod like class modifiers how like beast or um earth or sky does more damage to earth uh man does more damage to earth i think like there's another pyramid that the game doesn't really tell you about uh and that's why there's this small damage discrepancy but that it is it's really nice that she has this she is like she has a niche that lets her hit way harder than her competition the only servant that hits only aoe berserker servant that hits anywhere close to raiko damage uh, is probably going to be morgan when she uh yeah like basically tldr raiko becomes more general but if you are fighting man actually morgan because she already has super effective on her mp stacking that with power mod and all the offensive buffs you can possibly imagine morgan is the best man killer raiko pretty much any other servant and then juna is up here and he like 
he doesn't give a shit what kind of servant you are. He's still going to kill you dead. I'm happy to talk about Raiko. I'm going to go watch the Summer uh, 8 reveal now. Uh, I'm a little late to that because I'm recording this. Oh, well. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.